So now that we've looked at stars and colors, um, let's look a little bit at collections. Um, if stars and colors are a way to sort of give characteristics and then sort of sort your images, right? So to say, okay, give me everything that's at least three stars or show me everything that has a red label. Um, collections are a way to sort of group images together, right? So this would be, for example, if you were like, okay, these are going to this client, right? These are going to the art director. This is the first edit. Um, these are going to social. These are, um, I'm going to use them to apply for this grant, like whatever it is. You have a bunch of pictures and you want to designate, you know, these ones as some kind of group. Um, we use collections for this within Lightroom because it means that we're not moving things around on our hard drive. We're not putting them in folders. Um, you don't want to move stuff around once you've got it in Lightroom because Lightroom will lose track of it. Uh, you can also have one picture in multiple collections. So you might have a picture that you are sending, well, that you were using in social and also sending to a client. You might have a picture that you are, um, you know, sending to uh, a magazine, but also want to email to your mom because it's cool. Um, so that's what collections are about. They're one of the most important ways in Lightroom to be able to organize your images. So let's look at how to do them. Um, again, we're in the library tab. All of this is library stuff. Uh, we're going to come over here to collections, right? You may need to twiddle that open. I'm actually going to twiddle these guys above it closed. Um, in the in the catalog that we're using right now, there are already a couple of collections in here. There's the uh, ranking and collections files, right, which is where we are now, um, and that was all of the images that have this couch, book, cards, whatever setup. Um, there's a second collection in there. If we click on that, uh, which are the editing files that I'll use in a couple of future videos. Uh, above that, there's another one, a set, collection set, meaning a sort of folder with a bunch of collections in it. Um, and those are default. So those are some default smart collections. For the moment, just ignore those. I'll talk about what smart collections are in a couple of minutes. Um, but they're by default. You didn't create them. I didn't create them. They're just there. Um, do I wish they weren't there? Uh, kind of, but, you know, it's all right. It doesn't hurt anybody. Um, so let's make a new collection. So in collections, um, I would like to make a collection that is everything in my uh, ranking collections file that has a green label. So first I'm going to go back to my ranking collections files so I don't have to look at those editing files. Uh, then I want to search just for the stuff that has a green label. I'm going to come down here to my filter bar and boop. Just the green, right? Click on the little green square. There we go. Um, and now it's showing me only those things that have a green label. Um, I could also do that by going up here to the library filter attribute and selecting the green stuff. Um, so these are all the things that have a green uh, color label however you want to call it. I'm going to select them by hitting Command A for select all, right? So they're the only things there. So when I Command A, it selects all of them. Um, and now I'm going to come over here to collections on the left, hit that little plus and say create collection. Um, now this is a collection that uh, I'm making to have green stuff in it. So I'm going to call it uh, green things, call it whatever you want. Um, options include selected photos, right? I've clicked all of these. That's what I want. Um, not going to do these other things. Not going to put it in a collection set. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and say create. Um, now, if we come over here to collections, we'll see that there is a new collection that is just green things. Um, and if I come create a library filter and hit none so that it's not just showing me the green things, um, I'm in the green things collection. So it's still only green things in there, right? If I go back to ranking and collections files, green stuff, yellow stuff, no color label, um, but they're in green things. There are all of the images that have a green label to them. Um, that's cool. 
Uh, you don't need to um, go in and select them all first before you create a collection. Um, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and make a um, collection called Green Things, and then I could just drag in any of the images that I wanted to put in it that had um, a green label, right? Um, I could have a collection here that was just pictures with my head in it, right? Seems kind of not happy. Um, but I could make that collection and then I could go in and drag images into it. Let's do it actually. Brad's head. Don't include selected photos because that's just some random picture. Okay, cool. Um, go to my catalog, go to all photographs. And now we'll look for, there's my head, and there's my head, there's my head. Remember, we could do this by doing a keyword search. And now to put them in there, I just grab them by the picture. Don't click on the outside, grab them by the picture part and drag them into that Brad's head collection. I look at that there. This is the number of pictures in it. All of a sudden, there are four pictures in it. Boop, and there they are. Um, very cool. Uh, we can also do a second kind of collection. So that's a regular collection. I call them dumb collections, only because the next kind of collection is a smart collection. So come down here to collections again, create smart collection. And a smart collection, again, also something that I don't use that often. Um, other people use them all the time though, so it's important to know how they work. So if a regular collection you select things and put them in it, right? Sort of like a suitcase or whatever. Um, with a smart collection, it's sort of rules-based. So you have a set of rules, and if the image meets those criteria, then it's automatically in the collection, right? So you could have a smart collection that was everything with three stars, right? If something has three stars, it's just in the collection, right? If you had something that had three stars and you gave it then two stars, it would automatically be out of the collection. So the nice thing about a smart collection is you don't have to add things and take them out. Anything that follows those rules is in that collection. So if you wanted to make a collection of all the pictures of the bride, right? You could go for like the bride keyword, they'd all be in there. Um, you could say anything that has five stars, they would all be there. And if you change your mind about what pictures should have five stars, you were like, okay, that's four stars now then that would be automatically out of that smart collection. Um, so we made one that was, uh, had a green thing on it. Let's make one that is yellow color label. Um, and to do that, it says match all of the following rules. Click label color is yellow. Great. Cool. So now I didn't have to drag anything anywhere. All of a sudden, it has all of these pictures in it that have a yellow label. Um, now, again, this picture, right, which is for a different demo, happens to have a yellow label. And so there it is um, in my smart collection. The only way to get rid of it, right, if I go here, usually I could just delete something out of a collection. It says, hey, you can't do that because it's still following the rules, so it has to be in the collection. Um, the only way for me to remove that from the collection is to change what color it is. Let's make it green. And now, poof, um, it's no longer in the collection because the collection is only things that have a yellow color label. Um, so those are smart collections. And there are a huge number of things that you can set up as criteria for what your smart collection is going to add, right? Again, we talked about stars, we talked about other metadata. You could say, okay, only my iPhone shots that have two stars, like that could be a smart collection. Um, so those are cool. Uh, target collection is also something that's very useful. So I'm gonna go back here to my collections and I'm gonna select that yellow color label collection and hit the minus to get rid of it. Um, the green one, I'm gonna hit the minus to get rid of that. Um, Again, I'm deleting the collection. I'm not deleting the photos. The photos stay in my catalog. They're fine. Um, even if I were to go into the main 
all photographs section of my catalog and delete them, right? I would have, it would sort of pop up a thing notifying me and being like, hey dude, um, and I could still just get it out of the, the catalog and still leave it on my hard drive. But deleting a collection doesn't affect anything. Cool. Um, so Brad said, let's definitely delete that. Okay, um, I'm going to make a new collection, um, create collection, and I'm going to say set as target collection. Um, I feel like the most recent version of Lightroom has changed how they talked about these things a little bit. Um, but I'm going to make it a target collection. You can also go to an existing collection, um, right click or control click on it and say set as target collection. Um, So the target collection, I see it down here, it has a little plus next to it. Um, anytime something is designated as the target collection, it will have a plus. So if I went to editing files and control clicked on it and said set as target collection, right now it has a plus and this one doesn't. You can only have one target collection at a time. Um, but the great thing about the target collection, if I go back here to all photographs, um, the great thing about the target collection is that as I go through here, Anytime I see something that I want in that target collection, all I have to do is hit B on the keyboard for BAM! Um, so, no, 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 yes, that's great, yes, fabulous, uh, oh yeah, that's right, that one's great. And I'm like, oh no, I changed my mind, hit B again, okay, and it's out. Um, so, target collections are a great way of very quickly adding a bunch of images as you're going through to a particular collection, right? So I can make a target collection that is rushed to social, right? And then I could go through and be like, boom, 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 boom. Every time I hit a B, they would all go into that target collection. I could go then to that target collection and be like, mm, no, I don't think that one. Hit B again, and it's out. Um, so this is the, for me, the easiest way to put things in a collection, right? I don't use smart collections that much, right? Because I don't want to be like, oh, they all have, yellow stars and or yellow color label and three stars and metadata that says like Jones Beach like I don't know um, that's a pain um, I don't want to drag a thousand things in because like that's eh, hard um, so I just go through hit the letter B throws it into that target collection once I'm done once the collection has everything in it untarget it um, and I move on uh, target collections again awesome Super great, super powerful. Um, the very last thing I think that I wanted to talk about um, is collection sets. So if I go back over here to all of my collections, um, if I right click or control click on any of them, right? So I go to ranking collections, control click. Um, I can, right, we just saw a set as target collection. I can rename it, I can duplicate it. Um, all those good things. Um, I can also come up here and say, create collection set. Um, now I can do that there. I could also do it up here by hitting that plus. And a collection set is kind of what it implies. It's a set of collections. So if I had everything that was going to uh, the immediate family from a wedding, right? Um, that might have a collection set that is you know, bride side of the family, groom side of the family, uh, crazy Uncle Rob, like all of these things could be in one collection set that is, you know, rushed output or for album or whatever wedding photographers do. Um, so if I make a uh, collection set here that is, uh, files I'm actually using. There it is, files I'm actually using to demo, and I can go to the edit files and the ranking and collections files, drag those in there, um, and you'll see that they are now underneath. I can twiddle it closed, twiddle it open. I can select the overall set, which will show me everything that's in there, or I can go back into just the subsets of editing files and ranking and collections. Um, so depending on how complicated you get, 
collection sets are going to be very useful. In this class, we're going to use collection sets for our assignments, right? So in assignment one, I might have a collection set that's all of my assignment one pictures, and then I would have within that a collection that is the pictures that I turned in, and then all the rest of the stuff, right? That's one way that you could do it. Um, you know, usually we have like selects of some sort or all the pictures. Um, kind of up to you as you're working on it in uh, your actual normal life. Um, but if you look at the PDF handout, we'll try to use them here in this class um, to organize all of our pictures into assignments, right? Because we're just bringing them all into that raw file, but we'll make collection sets for assignment one, assignment two, assignment three, exercise one, exercise two, exercise three. Um, as a way to organize them and only have to look at some of those pictures at a time. Um, all right, so that is our general organizing thing, and now we will go and come back for a little bit of editing.